you're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin, and in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. I'm talking about the end of everything as we know it. No more birds, no more trees, and perhaps most problematically of all, no more people. You have to put an end to her. Look, you're already on the path that leads to the cabin. Why would you be here if it weren't to complete a very important task? You've made it this far, you might as well reach the end of your journey. She's not dangerous. She's just a princess. The danger comes if she gets out, which she will unless you do something about it. While I appreciate the mental exercise, we are running up against a bit of a ticking clock. Nevertheless, let me assure you, the princess is locked up because she's dangerous. She is not dangerous because she's locked up. And before you decide to waste even more of our time by asking how I know that, let me suggest a more pragmatic lens through which to view this situation. Causality doesn't matter here, because the end result is the same no matter what led us up to this point. If the princess leaves the cabin, the world will end, and there is no changing that. It's no use arguing semantics over a metaphorical chicken or egg, because the egg is hatched and it's about to ruin everything. Unless, of course, you do your job and slay her. The more specifics you have, the harder it will be for you to do this very important job. She's a princess. People will listen to her, because listening to her is in their nature. And when they do, everything will come crashing down. Does it? Are you a monarchist? Is slaying a princess that much worse than slaying a fisherman, or a miller, or a seamstress? If anything, slaying a princess is much better than slaying a seamstress. Seamstresses contribute something of value to society. Oh, if only that were the case, but I don't make the rules. I have to say, I'm surprised at your reluctance thus far, but unfortunately for the both of us, you're the only one who can pull this off. Like I said, I don't make the rules, no matter how much I wish I did. Are you serious? No, you have to do it. Of course I haven't. Why would I even consider that? Nobody wants the world to end. I mean, maybe some people do, like nihilists, or very, very evil people, but surely you're not one of those, right? Yes, but you'll have to slay her before you get it. It's a secret, but I think you'll like it. It's a special reward, just for you. And whatever you think it might be, I can promise you it's going to be even better than your wildest imagination. That sounds a bit fishy. Then I guess we'll just have to see what happens. But a word of warning. 
If you go in prepared to hear her out, she could easily trap you in her web of lies. And the more you listen to her honeyed words, the harder it'll be to pull yourself out. Then each and every one of us is doomed. So sure, go, talk to her. See how that turns out for all of us. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. We're not going to go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. You take the blade from the table. It'd be rather difficult to slay the princess and save the world without it. I assume so. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice carries up the stairs. Who's there? She sounds dangerous. It's almost as if she's the one in charge down here. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. Don't be a stranger. And it's been so long since I've had any visitors. Come on down. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's so coldly beautiful. Is she really a threat to the world? Focus on the task at hand. And there you are. Are you here to kill me or something? That isn't a good idea. Just drop the knife, and maybe the two of us can talk things out. She's right, we shouldn't. We should just drop the blade. Don't you dare. It's fine. We can decide what we want to do after we talk to her. Maybe she really is a monster. But killing someone in cold blood isn't very becoming of us. You ignore the trembling in your hands and tighten your grip on the blade. You poor thing. Your hands are shaking. Are you scared of me? Because you should be. You step forward, your grip on the blade tightening as you steal your resolve. Oh? No talking then? Fine. What even makes you think you can kill me? I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? And if that knife is the only weapon you have, you'll have to get close enough to use it. So, you should just drop it. Best not to risk finding out what I can do. She's unarmed. If you hesitate now, it'll be too late. End this. Then I'm not talking to you. I guess we are. For the love of everything, just slay her already. Or drop the blade. Do something. Yeah, I'm sure. For goodness sake, the two of you can't just stand around like this forever. 
Eventually, something is going to give, and I highly recommend that you be the one to take the initiative here. Doubt, unfortunately, clouds your thoughts as you attempt to run her through. A moment of distraction and hesitation is all she needed to sidestep your thrust and deliver a catastrophic blow to your jaw. It feels like you've been hit with a sledgehammer. You can feel bone grinding on bone where your jaw has been fractured. Holy shit, that hurt! Though she's unarmed. The shock of that first strike is enough to stagger you, putting you and the princess on somewhat equal footing. Your blade slashes through the air again and again, and her fists connect with your body as many times or more, each impact as heavy as that first bone-crushing hit. We can still turn this around. You and the princess stare at each other, both gasping for breath, equally exhausted. You probably won't make it out of here alive, but you can at least make sure that she won't make it out of here, either. <sighs> Excuse me? Do you think this is what I wanted to happen? I have a duty to state the facts of the situation, and honestly, it's a miracle anyone is still standing right now. Can you not feel all those ruptured organs bouncing around in there? If the princess doesn't do our friend in herself, internal bleeding is certain to finish the job. The two of you clash for the final time. You feel your ribs break as she delivers a heavy blow, but you push through the pain, falling forward and sinking your blade deep into the princess's heart. Oh. The two of you fall to the floor. This was fun. The princess gasps, her voice an unhealthy rasp as her lungs start to fill with blood. You put up more of a fight than I thought you would. But I have to wonder, do you really think this is the end? But you don't have time to worry over such things. Everything goes dark and you die. The adversary. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If, it if you don't, it will be the end of the world. terrible sense of deja vu. No, you don't have that. This is the first time either of us have been here. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. So he remembers. You know I can hear you, right? It's going to be a lot harder than you think to keep secrets from me. That's fine. It doesn't matter if he can hear us. The only thing that matters is marching up to that cabin and winning. That's the spirit. There's no point in squabbling when the real threat is just up that hill. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. Lying and cheating doesn't sound like her at all. Not that it matters. It's not like she can lie or cheat in the middle of a fight. But you can lie in the middle of a fight. Are you sure about that? Yes. The point of my warning wasn't to start an argument over what circumstances the princess is capable of lying in. It was to give you some broadly applicable advice. The princess will do and say whatever she thinks it will take to get her out of there. So don't trust her. Ever. Are we clear? Crystal. Let's just get on with it already. Oh, I like this voice of stone guy.
The cabin is tighter than its exterior would suggest. Its cold stone walls press in on you, as if trying to forcefully direct you towards your destination. The only furniture of note is a black iron altar, with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. That's because there isn't a mirror. There's the altar, the blade sitting on the altar, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror. There isn't. Oh, stop bickering and just get on with it. Who even cares if there's a mirror? You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. But it was there a second ago. And now it's gone, so all of us can stop arguing about it and get to f You take the blade from the altar. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a rough stone staircase, its walls pressing at your sides and tightening as you descend. The air seeping from below is heavy and oppressive, with an almost sulfuric odor to it. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. Her fierce voice carries up the stairs. Is that another challenger? Finally! It's been ages since I've had a good fight. Oh, yeah, baby. This isn't what she sounded like last time. Her voice is a little deeper, almost threatening. Yes, uh... Good. Sounds like my kind of princess. As much as I appreciate the enthusiasm, just make sure you don't let your bloodlust get to your head. You need to stay focused and keep your wits about you. <coughs> Remember, you're here to slay the princess, not to have a good fight. As you descend the final step, the form of the princess comes into view. A large shackle leading from her wrist to the basement wall. Looks like she could rip those chains out of the wall without a second thought. Oh, it's you again. I've been hoping you'd find your way back here. Good to see that death doesn't stick for either of us. And you brought your little knife, too. Yes! I'm going to have fun breaking you into little pieces. You look exactly the same. All right. Fine. I believe you. What? What you said earlier in the woods, I believe you. You've already met the princess, and the princess has already met you. That's all the more reason to take this seriously. You don't know. Whatever brought the two of you back to life isn't a fluke. And beyond that, do you know who doesn't remember anything that happened last time? Me! I don't remember. Uh, are you okay? Of course I'm not okay! As far as we're all concerned, the fate of my world is still very much on the line. Not all of us have the luxury of jumping over to a parallel universe the second we die. I know. You and the princess have been talking about it. You don't have to be so snarky. Free her? You want? Free her. I don't know why I'm even bothering, to be honest. 
You know the stakes of the situation. Who says I want to be free? Yeah, I'm fine right where I am. Okay, hold on. Did you hear that? Maybe we don't have to do anything. If she's fine where she is, maybe... But you're going to have to fight me to the death. Never mind. Yeah, as far as I think. There is no happy ending where everyone makes it out of this place alive. You either deal with her here, right now, or she'll eventually find her way out. Whether she even wants to leave is hardly relevant. This cabin won't last forever. Hear that? Between him and her, that should be all the motivation you need. Now stop standing there and fight her. No, stop standing there and slay her. You're being a bit semantic, aren't you? I am, but it's an important distinction. If you're going to see this through, you need to hold the right intent. This isn't a sparring match, it is a lethal confrontation that will decide the future of everything. Fine. As long as it leads to a fight, do whatever he just said. Oh, I remember you all right. Best three minutes of my life. So, why don't we do it again? See? She wants to fight us again. There's no reason for us to stand around talking. Finally ready to complete your destined task, you launch off the whetstone floor of the basement and catapult yourself headlong towards the princess. Here we go. Let's make this count. Oh, we'll make it count, all right. As you bridge the gap, your blade slashes across the princess's chest, splitting skin and drawing a jagged line of bright red blood. But she's unfazed by your onslaught. Her expression barely changes as her fist collides with your ribs, cracking them like twigs and driving you right back down to the basement floor. You can hear her chain snap, as you struggle to recover from the impact. She almost looks disappointed in us. Why is she disappointed in us? Oh, you don't actually get it, do you? That knife may be sharp, but you clearly don't want to kill me. It's not fun if you hesitate. It's not fun if you try to trick me and make me bleed out. It's only fun if you go straight for the heart. You need to put everything you have into seeing me dead. So don't be afraid. Don't hesitate. Kill me. Don't let her get in your head. Reincarnation or not, this world needs you to win. She's huge, but that probably means she's slower than us. Take it slow. Think it through. And don't panic. Bleeding her out is our best course of action. Don't listen to them. She understands something that they don't. The only way to win. The only way out of this is through her. If that's your plan, then that's your plan. Push off the ground, ignoring the pain in your ribs as you charge at the princess once more. You can feel flesh give way before a sudden impact blunts your momentum, your weapon tightly lodged in the bone of her arm. She grins at you. Pull it out. We'll try a different angle. No, we can do this. Just keep pushing. We're not going to win if our weapon's stuck in her arm. You pull back on the blade's hilt, doing your best to free it from its sinewed prison. But as you tug the blade free, the princess slams you down onto her knee. It collides with your ribs, and you feel them splinter. You hit the floor, your ribs complaining painfully. But 
you can feel that you push yourself off the ground and attack the princess, trying to bait you. Do your best to outplay her, slashing out and leaving red cuts in the tattered room. Weak little dance isn't working. Just toughen up and overpower her. She's throwing us around like a ragdoll. I think overpowering her is a little out of the question. Did you think you could stop me with a few cuts? All this dancing around is doing nothing but annoying me. I own this place, and I own you. The princess's arm shoots forward, her palm wrapping around your head, fingers gripping your skull. How disappointing. She squeezes, the pressure unbearable as her fingers dig into your scalp. The last thing you hear is the unsettling crack of your skull, and the sickening churn of what was your grey matter. Everything goes dark, and you die. But I wanted to kill her. You're on a path in the wood. If you weren't so damned afraid of what she'd do to you, we wouldn't have died back there. Fear is good. Fear keeps us alive. We died because you didn't have enough of it. I didn't think about running. So what? You'd have us cower in a corner? No, but that place suits her better than it suits us. She's big. We can't hope to find holes and openings down there. We need more room if we're going to survive. Are you suggesting luring her into the woods? Do you have any idea how dangerous that would be? If you lose sight of her, if she manages to slip away, that's it. Game over for everyone, yourself included. Are you not challenging us on all the looping? Have you known about it the whole time? Are you the same one we've been talking to since the beginning? Sorry to disappoint what I'm sure must feel like a grand revelation, but that's not what's going on here. We've never met. Then what is going on? What's going on is that you'd only be saying the things you've been saying if you'd already been here. And if you'd already seen things you weren't supposed to have seen. It doesn't matter. We could go in circles forever. I don't like staying still for too long. Let's get to the cabin, see this through. It's good to know that at least one of you is still capable of reason. We may have the same destination, but we're not the same. You are still an other. And I don't trust you. Well, fortunately, you have an entire trip through the woods to reconsider that. There's nothing to reconsider. We're all for violence here. Are we? I haven't signed off on anything yet. Violence is the answer here, but the method is equally important to the act. You can't let her leave the cabin. It's like I said. All just circles. Instinct tells me we need space, and I trust instinct. Nothing else to say. Not for me. It's evidence of one of many ticking clocks. You can't let her spread any further. Things are always changing. She changed, the cabin changed, we've changed. Why wouldn't the woods change too? Because they're not supposed to have changed. This is supposed to be a path in the woods. If it's not, it means something's gone horribly wrong. It isn't long before you find yourself at the end of the path, staring up the hill at the cabin. I hope you've given serious thought to your predicament. Okay. No last advice for us? No words of warning? Sorry. From what I gather, you've heard it all before. 
There's no use screaming into the wind. I don't know. Screaming sounds pretty good right about now. I could use a little catharsis. Catharsis is for when we're finished. For now, we need to hold it out in front of us. Something to chase. The interior of the cabin is suffocatingly tight, more of a glorified tunnel than a building. Its stone walls squeeze against your sides, leaving you no choice but to press forward. The only furniture of note is an iron altar jutting out from the wall, a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you're going to do this right. See? We have even less space than before. We need space or she'll kill us. And the only space is out there. Take it! Take the blade from the altar. It will be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Yes. Good. There's no overcoming her without it. We need every part of us to survive, and that steel claw is as much a part of us as any. Maybe it'll go away again. For something to go away, it would have to be there to begin with. And let me assure you, there's no mirror here. The only thing at the end of the room is the door to the basement. Can I stand in the mirror? No use arguing. Mirror or not, we need to be there. The why we pick doesn't matter. I agree with the freak. Let's get a move on already. And worst comes to worst, we can smash it. Yes. You step forward and approach the door to the basement, hesitating before you open it, as if you don't see it. You're rather committed to the bit, aren't you? The door's right there, it's right in front of you. This really is just like last time. Yes. It smells of nothing, yet it's still there. You bring your fist crashing down against the door leading to the basement. It swings open, scraping against the floor as it reveals the dim path ahead. Why am I not surprised? It was in our way, and now it's not. <coughs> That's all that matters. <coughs> Before you is what may as well be a sheer cliff face. There are enough footholds that you'll be able to clamber your way to the <coughs> bottom, but it will require careful effort. The air hissing up from below is warm and wet, like the breath of an enemy locked in close quarters. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice, bold and fierce and impatient, echoes from the chamber below. Do you have more fight in you than last time? That was such a disappointing show. I know you can do better than that. Go to her. Rile her up. If she's angry, she'll make mistakes. But that wouldn't be fun. I don't want to be a monster chasing you down. I want to face you head on. I want an equal. It's so much better that way. We need to get closer. She needs to see us to give chase. All right. You've nowhere to go but down. You start the difficult journey, gripping the stone, lowering yourself foot by grueling foot. But soon, there is solid ground beneath you. Remember every crack and crevice. You will need to be faster than her. You turn to face what lies at the end of the narrow tunnel. The princess, imposing and tightly muscled, grins back at you from the darkness. Goddamn, I'd smash. Her face widens into a broad grin. There you are. Knife in hand. How thrilling! 
Attack me, bleed me, twist the blade in my flesh. Break your bones against my body. I want a real challenge this time. I don't know, you're a bit too big. We can't get that close. She'll kill us in the tight space, steel claw or not. Make her come to us, stand beyond her chains, and let her become frenzied. She'll break them, <coughs> and we run. I really don't like the sound of this. It's the only way we live. Well, what are you waiting for? If we're going to do this right, you can't be scared. You need to want this as much as I do. I want to kill you. Freaking just jump in and stab you. So go on. Make the first move. Don't keep me waiting. scoffs. Oh, you're up to something tricky, aren't you? You're teasing me with what I want, but I'm sick of waiting. I'm not going to let you give me another bad fight. I'm going to get what I want. Bloody desire in her eyes, the princess rushes forward, ignoring her chains as they bend and snap. Run. Without hesitation, you turn back the way you came and scramble up the ledge towards the tunnel entrance. As you near the top, hands desperately clawing at jagged stone, you glance back. The princess is right on your heels. She doesn't bother to scale the wall as you do, instead digging deep into the rock of the cliff face with her fingertips in her rabbit pursuit. Anywhere you go, I will follow! Good. You reach the ledge and hoist yourself up into the tunnel, the cabin door finally in sight, at once within your grasp and infinitely distant. What is all of this for? What's the point? You and I are always going to end in violence, so why bother to run? I know what I am. Why can't you be the same? Little bird, little bird, where do you think you're going? We're almost there. Don't think about almost. We're there when we're there. And we'll take the fight with us. Your skin hums tight with adrenaline as you burst through the cabin door and roll onto the grass. You glance back at the cabin as the princess, singular in her desire to destroy you, explodes through the doorway. You are walking a dangerous path. If you waver once, it's all over. So get it right. There's nothing left to slow me down. Do you think this is better for you? Do you think this space gives you an edge? Then show me. Show me that you've been worth all the room you've taken up in my head. Do it. Be swift, strike true, be where she's not. Let your body move you. You leap from the grass and bound towards the princess, keeping low. Charging me head on. Brave and foolish. Her body braces for impact, anticipating the clash. That's where you're both wrong. Left now. That's what I was thinking. Left. As the princess strikes, your body swerves to the left. She overextends, stumbling as her balance shifts unexpectedly. Strike. Before you can finish the thought, you lash out, the blade slicing through her leg. She turns to swing again. That's her leg. Right! You move out of the way, but this time it's not quite as clean. You can feel a bruise already blooming where her elbow crashed into flesh. It's nothing. A scratch. Yes, it could be worse. And you managed to gift her another cut in return. I'll be damned. We're actually going to pull this off, aren't we? Yes, we are. Let's go. You just might, but don't let it get to your head. Not until it's over. Yes, finally! 
This is the hole I felt in my heart. This is what I've needed. This is what I've been missing. This is how it always needed to end. Both of us giving it our all, beating and bleeding each other to death. The two of you engage in a devastating flurry of blows, each of you wounding the other again and again. She's stronger, but you're faster, and the deeper the both of you fall into your lethal dance, the more your edge shines over hers. She's slowing down, blood pouring from wounds, splattering at her feet, leaving her weak and unsteady. More! Keep going! We can't stop now! You spy an opening, but this time she's waiting for you. She lets you sink the blade deep, trapping you in place long enough to wrap you in her impenetrable arms. You're slammed to the ground. Nothing! These blows are nothing to us! But her gambit wasn't enough to close the gap. It wasn't enough to kill you. She stares you down, coughing up a splash of blood as she gasps for breath. <sighs> You've outplayed me. Haven't you? Something feels wrong. So and? Then what happens? She's gone. Where did she go? Should we try and find her? And there's that mirror again. Why is it here? Why now? He is. Does that mean the world ended? It hasn't ended. We're still here. The world didn't end. We're still here. Come on. We just need to keep going. Yeah. I'm begging you, don't do this. This... this doesn't feel right. It feels... different. Final. That... Yeah. Thing reeks of death. Screw the mirror! We just need to find the princess! Something finds me in the long quiet and brings me the gift of a fragile vessel. What? Yes, nerves and fibers to feel the worlds beyond, perspectives to make my own. This one yearns to grow and struggle. Even now I feel a will pushing against mine, not realizing that we are one. She will make for a fierce heart. Do not mourn her. We will provide her with the growth she fought for. Solitary lights in an empty city. What are you? A person, a set of eyes witnessing from one perspective. I think that you are more like me than you are like a person. How so? 
We are oceans reduced to shallow creeks. How can the world have ended if we are talking? You are the only thing I have ever known. The space we're in is vacant. Nothing comes here but us. I have only just now stirred to consciousness. I could not have trapped you here, and I too yearn to be free. Nothing as we are, but I know that there are worlds beyond us, and that we are meant to reach them. There is no exit. But this vessel is a creature of perception. She can make you forget, if only you believe her to be able to. Well, I don't think she can. Bring me more perspectives, so that I may be whole. And perhaps then we will know our freedom. Then we will be here forever, as we are now. Unfinished. Dry. Hollow. She asks that I tell you to remember her. You won't. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin, and in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. We're not gonna go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. The interior of the cabin is the... You take the blade from the table. It'd be rather... The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice carries up the stairs. Who's there? She sounds dangerous. It's almost as if she's the one in charge down here. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. Good. You're still listening to reason. 
you walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's so coldly beautiful. Is she really a threat to the world? Focus on the task at hand. And there you are. Are you here to kill me or something? You step forward, your grip on the blade tightening as you steal your resolve. Oh? No talking then? Fine. What even makes you think you can kill me? I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? And if that knife is the only weapon you have, you'll have to get close enough to use it. So, you should just drop it. Best not to risk finding out what I can do. She's unarmed. If you hesitate now, it'll be too late. You lunge forward without a moment's hesitation. You feel flesh easily give way and look down to see your blade already sinking deep into her heart. Oh. This is it, isn't it? I'm almost embarrassed. I should have seen that coming, but I have to wonder, do you actually believe this was enough to kill me? It's like she's convinced she can't die. Yes, even as she lays there dying, she entirely believes herself to be alive and well. But it's over, isn't it? She stopped breathing moments ago. That arrogant look still plastered on her face. But is it over? Really over? It's over. Don't get all worked up. We should make sure. What's the harm in checking for a pulse? I really don't think you should do that. And why shouldn't we? Is there something you're not telling us? I've told you everything that's happened with complete accuracy. The princess is dead. Your blade pierced her heart. There's no coming back from that. You lean down and wrap your hand around the blade's hilt. But as you begin to slide it out of its resting place, you feel a sharp and sudden jab in your side. What was that? I guess I won't be dying alone after all. Quick, let's get out of here. It's too late. It's too late for that now. You collapse to the ground as the mortally wounded princess twists a blade of her own deeper between your ribs. As you fall, she falls with you, exhausted by the effort, the little life that was left in her eyes fading rapidly. An eye for an eye, a life for a life. I guess we're even now. See you around. You were so close. Why did you hesitate? It doesn't matter. At least you managed to take her with you. For whatever that's worth. Everything goes dark, and you die. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Warning, before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. It couldn't be more on the money. But we're really doing this, aren't we? I say you're lost, but I'm stuck here with you. We know what to look out for this time. We know to be careful. <coughs> Just stay focused and you'll be fine. <coughs>
The interior of the cabin is a jagged mess of warped wood and broken boards, their splintered edges as uninviting as shattered glass. The only furniture of note is a pointed table with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Are we really doing this without a weapon? You know she has one, right? The door to the basement creaks open, revealing what must once have been stairs. The fractured slats look as if they've been torn from their source and violently jammed into the wall. The air seeping up from below has an almost metallic quality to it, like the smell of fresh blood. And you can hear what sounds like the rhythmic scraping of metal coming from down below. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. Scraping? She's not even trying to hide her knife. It's like she wants to get in our head. That sound could be anything. It's probably just her chains dragging across the floor. I am begging you to get out of your head. Her grating voice carries up the stairs. I hope you've come to rescue me. I've been stuck down here forever. There is something so wrong with that voice. Yeah, she thinks she's better than us, like she doesn't even have to put on an act this time. As you descend the final step, the form of the princess comes into view, her sharp eyes following you from across the room. Finally, somebody! Quick, get me out of these chains! We're not safe here! Come on now, we're not falling for that, are we? She's trying to trick us, but she can't hide that threatening edge to her voice. She just wants us to get close, to let our guard down. Exactly. She sounds threatening because her mask is already slipping. She knows why you're here. What are you waiting for? You are here to rescue me, right? It's boring if you leave. I'll be right back. She's bored? That's absurd. She doesn't get to be bored. Not in a way that matters. She's a prisoner. She's... <laughs> Shit. In a sudden burst of movement, the princess leaps towards you, a blade erupting from her free arm, her wrist limp and empty from the violent expulsion. Huh. So I guess she did have a knife of her own after all. How conciliatory of you. We appreciate it, really. Now what are we going to do? At least we're safe here. She's still in chains. And those chains stop her from continuing her advance, at least for a moment. She looks down at them with something between annoyance and confusion. And then she slices through her arm. Okay, maybe we aren't safe here. She doesn't even hesitate before darting towards you with a terrifying speed you can't hope to outpace. That won't stop us from trying. Run, 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 run! You sprint for the stairs, but... I wasn't exaggerating when I said she was running at you with a terrifying speed you couldn't hope to outpace. We don't make it, do we? No. You feel her blade in your back before you make it to the first stair. I'm going to kill you now. With a squelch, she does just that. Everything goes dark, and you die. Interesting. This is a, I, I'm seeing a pattern here. If I could win this third one. Or maybe I could just leave. You're on a path in the woods. No, fuck that. If we're gonna have to keep doing this over and over and over again, we're not starting in that goddamn woods every time. We're starting in the fucking cabin. Yes. You're what? The interior of the cabin is sharp, a constricting mess of curved and battered sheet metal pushing you towards... Wait, excuse me? What just happened? What did you just do? I feel dizzy. Oh ho ho ho! I guess I took us to the cabin, didn't I? 
Isn't that interesting? Who holds the cards now? Who cares about cards? You're all acting like this is about winning and losing, while this is actually about having fun. How can you care about having fun at a time like this? There is someone, something, out there pulling the strings, and we're all just puppets until we can figure out how to see them. But what if that someone is us, eh? Eh? Wouldn't that be neat? If we were the ones pulling the strings, I'm pretty sure we wouldn't have died twice already. Great, so obviously you've already been here. How many times? This is the sixth. This is our third? No wonder things have fallen apart. You do realise that every time you fail, she escapes and an entire world is damned to destruction, right? That can't be right, that's too much responsibility! It's only too much responsibility if these worlds are real. <sighs> Let's just stay focused, shall we? The only furniture of note is a bent metal table, a pristine blade perched, we take it. Okay, sure, you take the blade before letting me finish telling you it's there. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. And then, we throw it out the window! What? That blade is the only edge we have! We are not! Too late, because... Fortunately for the rest of you, and for me, and for the sake of the world... That is horribly unfair! He shouldn't be allowed to just do things like that! You were the one who made us pick it up. See? You're not the only one who can figure out how to do things. What's done is done. I suggest you make the best of it. Oh, is this how things are going to be now? All of us vying over a single body? Fine. See this corner? It's mine. And I better not see any of you trying to invade my personal space. So? Are you just going to stand there, or are you going to head to the basement like you're supposed to? I'd love to get started just as much as you would, but how are we supposed to get down there? You walk through the door. You do know what doors are, right? There isn't a door, there's just that mirror. There isn't a mirror. You really messed things up, didn't you? It's like you can't even see reality anymore. We can see our reality just fine. Why should we trust his? You make your way to the door at the end of the room, stopping just in front of it. You really must think you're looking at a mirror. Well, it doesn't exist. Just reach forward and open it. Let's just fumble for the handle and be done with it. I don't care what we look like. I care about getting to the end of this mess. You reach forward and place your hand on the door to the basement. It creaks <coughs> open. And the mirror's gone. Eh, surprising. I can't say I was particularly invested in looking at it before, but now... Now I really want to see what's in it. If it's so keen on hiding from us, whatever it has must be real good. It feels like it's hiding something from us. It's part of the big picture. I just know it. That's why it's being kept from us. Guess it's time for us to see her again. Just stay focused and you'll be fine. You step forward, but you don't get a chance to linger on the basement stairs. They are smooth and flat and metallic, an unintentional and unfortunately slippery ramp that quickly sends you skittering to the bottom. As your body tumbles onto the basement landing, the form of the princess comes into view, wryly smiling at you from a distance. Hi! It looks like you don't have a way out, so I'm not going to play dumb anymore. And you still don't have a weapon. That's funny! That's a joke! I'm going to kill you now! Yes, that was extremely silly of whoever did that. Probably a bad idea. That was you! I know, I'm just trying to add some levity to this. Well, since all of this was your idea, how about you figure out how to get us out of it? Oh, guys like us don't get to make any decisions. You should know that. I decided to pick up that blade, and you decided to throw it out the window. I take it back. Having my own corner clearly isn't working because I can still hear you three yelling at each other. She's going to kill us again, you know? Especially if we keep fighting with ourselves. We need to get rid of our thoughts. Your internal bickering is cut short by the wet sound of slicing meat. From the princess's arms erupt twin blades, glistening with her blood, the empty flesh of her arms flopping at her elbows like torn sleeves. 
the chain clatters to the floor. You're going to make me walk over to you, aren't you? All right, I'm out of ideas. What are we doing? the worst plan I've ever heard, and I absolutely love it. Let's try it out. Sure, why the hell not? Let's see if we can turn off the part of us that feels things. If we can't feel things, then how are we supposed to know what's true? You could always just trust what I tell you. Ha! <laughs> no. Sure thing. I love a challenge. I bet I can hurt you so much. The princess rapidly closes the distance. And then she skewers you. And? Does it hurt? No. Oh, a new one of us. I thought that only happens when we die. Did we die? Nah. We'd know if we died. Right? You're on it. No, you're in a... Where the hell are you? We're dead, aren't we? We're dead, dead. How long have we been dead? Have we been dead the whole time? Dead, 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 dead. If we didn't realise we were dead, then we made progress. Good job. Stop saying dead, all of you. We might have died a second ago, but right now we're extremely not dead. This is all horribly wrong. How many times have you been here? I don't actually know how to answer that question. I think he means how many times have we died. Yes. That. Oh, I've lost count, to be honest. Six. I haven't. It's four. No wonder everything's such a mess. This wasn't supposed to go past one. I wonder what you're going to do next. You're so full of ideas, and I love that. But I guess we don't have time to talk about things before the princess advances. Okay, whatever we do gets us another... us. Let's see how many we can stack. There's got to be a point where it makes us better than her. Yeah. Why not? It's not like dying again and again is doing us any harm. Let's see how far this little mind hole goes, shall we? Come on, show me something new! What's the point? It's all the same. She skewers you. Oh, don't give up on me just yet. You gotta keep going. Well, there's more of us. Let's see if that helps. We just have to hit her harder. She skewers you. More noise isn't helping. It's just making it harder to focus. Just keep dodging. Just keep dodging. Just keep dodging. You. What's the point of avoiding me if you're not going to fight? It doesn't matter how many times this takes, we can't give up. We don't even have a weapon. Yeah, some clod threw it out the window. Again, that was you. No, I was just the clod who suggested it. And if I knew we'd be stuck here forever, I wouldn't have done that. Compliment her on those gleaming blades. There's nothing better than a capable woman. She skewers you. You're cute. See? We lasted a little longer. Barely. Let's appeal to her better nature. We haven't tried that. I'm sure she'll listen to reason. She skewers you. We're getting close to something. Can't you feel it? One last time. Fine. One last time. None of this is working. Think. 
think. She skewers you. And then everything goes dark, and you die. Your Honor, don't lose your head. We're in a cabin, and we'll take it from here. No steel claw, though. Was tossing it the only thing we've done that was permanent? That's a sick joke, universe. A sick, sick joke. If it's gone for good, then maybe we never actually needed it. That's what I've been telling you all. We can do this without it. We're tougher than steel. Yeah, mind over matter. Who needs violence when you have love? Who needs love when you've mastered yourself? Who needs anything when we don't matter? Well, boys, are we... There are entirely too many of you. How many times have you been here? This isn't good. This is... How about you stick to describing things, and we'll stick to doing them? Yeah, leave it to the pros. Narrator, we heroically stride through the door and towards our destined final encounter with our star-crossed lover. Fine by me. You walk to the door and onto the basement stairs, only... It's more of a slide. Fine, I'll just shut up then and speed this whole thing along. Are you sure you don't want me to describe the stairs? Or this room, or anything? Don't care, just want to see how this ends. Fine, you make your way to the basement, where the princess awaits you. You know, this last time I killed you, and you didn't pop right back up again? I thought I'd actually done it. I thought I'd cut you into so many pieces you just weren't able to stitch yourself back together. But I guess we're not done. That's okay with me. It's good even. I like that. I got something ready for you while you were gone. Do you want to see it? She's gonna turn into like a Virginia Blades. I'm not going to wait for an answer. I'm just gonna show you. It's do, do, do. Ba, ba, ba. Are you gonna say what she does? Uh, oh, do, do you want me to talk now? Well, yeah, she says she has something new. I want to hear about the new thing. Yeah, me too. I think I speak for all of us when I say that I would like to hear you describe her new thing. Really? Okay then. Here we go, now. The princess's skin twists, splitting into red blooms of raw meat as it stretches and tears. Then it erupts. She becomes a wave of blood and viscera, pieces of her splattering against the walls. All that remains in the center of the room is a skeleton of blades. A heart beats furiously in its cage of a chest. Are you ready for what comes next? Holy shit! She's gorgeous. Absolutely divine. Yes, behold. The perfect woman. Do you think we can throw her out the window? That looked painful. How is she still alive? Hearts still beating, that's all she needs. This is fake. This is all fake. <coughs> that's all just made up. I'd say we bow down to her right now, if that had ever even slightly worked for us. This is all just a sick joke. I hate existing. We're screwed. I, I quit. I'm done. Forget it. This all right, is we 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 what just happened? It's so quiet. Something feels different about you. It almost makes me feel different. Like I should actually take this seriously for once.
this worked before. I was able to make you dead before. Did you do that? It's funny if you did. You're nothing. You've done nothing to me and I've done so much to you and... That's who we are. But it's like you're nothing now. You can't be nothing. If you're nothing, then what am I? Am I nothing too? No, I'm the one who hurts you. 